people to live your life in joy. And you know, you could you could try to come up with the greatest God that you could imagine. You couldn't imagine one as good as our God is. He wants nothing for you but joy. He wants nothing for you but to experience His mercy and His grace. And no matter what you've been like in your life, no matter how good you were all your life or how bad you are all your life, you've been put in the same exact category, and that is that of a sinner. And, and, that, and that when we come to Christ, that's all wiped out and all that's left is an abundant life full of joy. I can't imagine anything better, can you? What a, what a, what a God we have. What a glorious God. I'm um, going to be talking about joy today, the pathway that leads to joy. So um, as, you, as you follow along with, uh, with all of what we're going to be getting into, the main thing to remember here is all of us need to be experiencing joy in our lives. And if you're not experiencing joy, there's one or two reasons. Either you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior and have no uh, right to joy, or else you have accepted Christ as your Savior and you're not living in the manner that you should so that the joy can come into your life. And so categorize yourself. If, you're, if you have joy in your life, you praise the Lord for it. And if you don't have joy, let's fix it. Let's take care of it today. That's the way we are. Psalm 51, 7 through 13 David is talking to him. Now, I want you to get the context. David has sinned against God, and he is coming to God in his, in his remorse for how he has acted and what he has done, and he's pouring out his heart, and he says something in here. I'll let you catch it when we get there. He asks God, return unto me the joy of my salvation. So we get an idea that, yes, David was saved, but he had, fought, he had gone away from what God's intent was, and he had to see God give him that joy back. So if, here you can put yourself in there with it. And he, when he says, purge me with hyssop, he's talking about that, that, that dipping that hyssop branch into the, the blood of the sacrifice and sprinkling it on the, the articles in the, in the Holy of Holies. And, and by doing so, they became holy. And so you, as a Christian, if you read that, you have, he has dipped the hyssop branch into the blood of Jesus' sacrifice, and he has sprinkled it on you, making you holy. Isn't that wonderful? I think, I think, it's, a, I think it's, a, it's a marvelous thing that, that we, God has given us that position that we can see uh, God not only forgive us of our sins, but make us holy and right before him. He says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter, as, whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we ask you to bless your word today as it has gone out into the ears of the hearer. Bless the words spoken with the power of the Holy Spirit and bless the ears that hear with the power of the Holy Spirit that they may hear not in the flesh but in the spirit that it would go drive deep into their hearts and that they would maintain a, 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 a sense of your presence and that they would go from here knowing that they have not just heard somebody get up and, and speak, but that there, there was a touch of the Holy Spirit that they had met with God today. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's several things in this little set of verses that you, you, you see. You see him saying to, to God, God, Make sure I'm clean. Make sure that I have been forgiven of my sins. Make, make sure that, that even though I have sinned against you, and he says, and let the bones that you have broken be mended. Well, 
you know, we don't sometimes we don't think about that, but but you know, whenever we drift away, if you truly are saved and of God and God's child, if you drift away from him, he will do whatever it takes to get you back to him. He will hurt you if it would help you come back. And that now a lot of people don't don't like that preaching. They they don't like they like us to just talk about the the warm fuzzies, but the the truth is, is it is warm and fuzzy as long as you stay there in his in his will and in his presence. But when you drift away, watch out. He is also uh, uh, which old preacher used to call him the hound of heaven that will come after you and come find you and bring you home. Well, that's exactly what David's talking about. He says, then return to me the joy of my salvation. Let me see joy again. And, uh, and I think that ought to be the cry of every one of us. As we, as we live our lives, there's bound to be times whenever we get, get kind of the, the doldrums kind of hit and, we are, and we're tempted to, to uh, kind of forget for a minute how good God is in our lives. When that happens, all you got to do is go back to God and say, God, there I am. I, I, I need forgiven of that. Return unto me the joy of my salvation. You know, the, you know you, to, to know the true source of joy, you've got to come to Jesus. That's all there is to it. You've got to come to Jesus and, and find that true source of joy. There is no other joy on this earth except that joy that the Holy Spirit has given. We'll develop this out as I go. But it only comes through a gift of the Holy Spirit. And that only comes with salvation. Salvation comes by responding in a sense to, him, to the summons that the, of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit calls to you in, and in faith you accept Jesus Christ which brings the Christian freedom from sin and that leads to joy, okay? There is only one direction that it can go. You have to go through God's way of doing it. He is the door to salvation. When you go through that door, the Holy Spirit gives you joy as one of the things in your life. And if you want to snuff it out, that's up to you. But God's going to come get you until you open the door back to Him again. Although we, you know, the the... the when before your salvation, although you were isolated from God, you know you're now able to come and to find that joy and to be made one with God the Spirit. Okay, in the Spirit, God allows you to come back. The Holy Spirit immerses us into Christ at the point of salvation, and that leads to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There is a pattern that God does. And he, and he never drifts from it, that is the source of joy. So if you've never come to Christ as your Savior, you cannot have true joy. You can have happiness, but happiness, as I've said before, comes from the root of happy, uh, of happens, which means that, you know, if, if it happens to be that I feel good in the morning, I get up and I'm happy, but then I kick the bedpost on the way past, and, and, and all of a sudden the joy, the, the, the happiness is gone because it wasn't joy, it was just happiness. Joy comes whenever you kick the bedpost and it hurts just the same, but you're able to say, well, praise God, it wasn't all five of them, okay? You can, you, can, you can try to find something good in it and there's still joy no matter what is going on around you. So 1 Corinthians 12, 13, to show my point about the immersion of, of the, us into Christ. Now, this is the amplified version, but I kind of took a little liberty with it. So I, I put my own initials behind it so God would know that I, that, I, that, that, that I had taken the amplified version and, and changed it just a little bit. I didn't really change it. I just changed a word. But it says, he's, in the amplified, it says, For by means of the personal agency of the Holy Spirit... We were all, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, baptized, and by baptism united into one body, and all made to drink of the Holy Spirit. So we, uh, so we have been given this position by the Holy Spirit, where He has immersed us, 
That is what the word baptism means. Actually, the word baptism is not even translated. It's what they call a transliteration. It is the word in the Greek is the same as what they used in the English. And that is comes from what they in the Greek was baptizo. And the difference is, is that whenever you there, there's several words for 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 baptism. But this word that is always used of, of being baptized is the word immersed. It, and, and the description that, uh, that one of the writers of the Greeks put into it is says, it's like a garment. When you dye a garment, let's take a white garment, and when you're going to dye it purple, you immerse that white shirt in that purple, and it becomes purple. It comes out a different color than it went in. What you don't do is you don't hold it up and sprinkle the dye on it. That's, that's sprinkling. And that, it's not baptism. That's a, there's another word for that. And so you have to understand the, the Greek word for, for what we, when we immerse someone in, in, the, in the waters of baptism, it is because of the fact that they have accepted Christ and they are coming. And the position is, look, they are buried is, as the old person and then they are raised again to newness of life. They, are, they come out of the water a different color, a different person than they were when they went in. And, and, and uh, there's a lot of discussion about baptism that could be made, but let's just, let's just understand that. What I'm talking about is at salvation, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ. And so you have been immersed in Christ. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of li fruit in our lives, love, joy, right? Joy is there. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Well, I'm, I want you to know something. There is uh, numerous aspects of the fruit but the word is used is for fruit is singular. It is fruit of the Holy Spirit. That means that there is one fruit that has all these side effects, if you will, in, the, in there. So the fruit of your life is all of these things, not just one of them. And by the way, if you think, okay, well, I, I, I don't feel joy today, so you know, it must not be there. You, all you've done is squelched it down. It's the same way with love, with peace, with anything else. You have the ability to hide your, your face from God if you want to and submerge that to where it does not show up. You can do that, but it's not in God's will. And he will change you. He will change your mind one way or another. A person, now think about this, a person that is saved experiences the spirit-filled life. And the person who is saved but not living to in the Spirit usually will not experience joy. So a person who is, is not saved cannot, therefore, experience that. So, so it's easy to see that if you're, if, 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 you're, if you're lost and you don't know Christ as your Savior, then there is no chance of joy because joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has to be present for it to be true. Okay, a person that is not saved really has no right to experience joy. But, uh, but we who are have to be careful that we do not start living of our own flesh and expect there to be joy in our lives. So maintaining your joy once you have accepted Christ comes as part of your duty as a Christian. And the way you do that is to keep your life clean. The way to keep your life clean. By the way, that goes with holiness. We are, uh, uh, we are to be holy as God is holy. And you, uh, I've been told a lot of times, I've been told, you can't, a, even a Christian can't be holy like God is holy. I beg to differ. He said that we have to be holy as God is holy. Therefore, it must be that I can be holy in that manner. I have a choice every time I do something to choose to be like Christ or to choose to be like Joe. 
And, and Joe can't be trusted because he's of the flesh, okay? We, he died. We buried him in the waters of baptism. And what came back up is Christ. Now, that, that, that sounds funny, but it's the truth. What you have as your salvation is that you are no longer the old man that you once were. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you have been recreated into the likeness of Christ, and you are now a new creation, okay? So Isaiah 59 says that he, he says he hates your sin, but he loves you. And let's look at that. He says, it is your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Now, this is a, this is a verse of, of warning to Christians as well as the lost. The lost, they, God does not hear the lost. He's waiting for one prayer that he hears from the lost. And that is, Lord Jesus, here I am a sinner. Forgive me. But for us, he, he, we also can start to live our lives in a sinful manner. And when we do, he obviously turns his face from us and he cuts us off in the point that he will not hear us until we come to him and repent. Now that's, that's almost scary in, its, in, its, in, in, in how far it could go if you allow it to go there. So what do we do? How do we get back into the fellowship of God? Well, we agree with God. I mean, I, I, it sounds a little redundant because I'm, I'm always talking about it, but it's so easy. We've got to go over it over and over and over and over again. You know, when I was in karate, we, one thing that I learned real fast over the, over the years of being in there is nothing about the technique changes. When you learn karate, when you're a white belt, you have, you're, you're not expected much from you, and therefore they, they're, they're teaching you the form, they're teaching you what, how to throw this certain punch or, 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 or this kick or whatever, and you, you learn it by repetition and by practice, but when you get to your green belt, you're expected more of you. By the time you turn purple belt in Shotokan anyway, when you turn get, get your purple belt, a lot more is, is added to that simple little technique that, it, that you were originally thought. And, and, and you're lined up, white belts, green belts, purple belts, brown belts, black, and, and in the room. And as you watch, the, the, the white belts still are just learning the punch. And on the far end, the black belts may have four things they are accomplishing in that one technique. My point is this in, in, in teaching you, is, is that as you grow in Christ, more is expected even though it is the exact same thing. So as I teach it, I, I, I teach that you have to, have to confess your sins and agree with God, but you need to be taking it far further the more you have been, the longer you have been saved. You need to be taking it deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ and knowing these things. So just remember, 1 John 1, 9 says to confess our sins. As a, as a, as a, as a baby Christian, we teach them to tell God about it. Okay, and, and as, a, as you get older in Christ, you know that you have an obligation to agree with God and to, and to come to him humbly and to you add all these other things to it. And so you get the meaning. So you just agree with God and confess your sins and, and, and take care of them. And then in Psalm 51, 2, he said, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. And so we have a, we have a, a need to, uh, to, to, to be able to uh, see that happen in our lives and be able to confess our sins and see him purge us from that sin. And, and he says, hide my face from your sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Where, is, where we are to go is to see that in our, in our lives as we confess our sins, we are to take him so seriously that we see him as cleaning our heart down back down to the holiness that it should be. So we, in a sense, we tell Jesus. Now, 
And that sounds a little funny, and, and, and I'm going to add that to it because we're going to be singing this song later. But it is that song, I Must Tell Jesus. You remember it? I must tell Jesus all of my problems. You remember it? Okay. That is a, the basis level of what we're trying to say. You have to have that feeling and that spirit of being able to go back to Jesus and tell him all about it. No man can ever take his place in your life. No man can ever come to him and, 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 and you can't go to someone else and talk to, it, to, him, uh, to them about your problems. You, there's no way that you can accomplish what is accomplished whenever you are, uh, whenever you go to Christ because he is able to forgive you. All they can do is listen. You know, it's that for there is one only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. There is only one that you can tell. And nobody else, by the way, nobody else needs to hear. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's religions in our world that believe you have to go to a, a priest and tell him all about it and he will decide what you need to do so that he can absolve you of your sins. I, had, I was in a hospital room one time and a, and a priest came in and he said, would you like to confess your sins? He says, I'm here to hear your sins. And I said, well, I talked to, I talked to God about my sins. And he, he says, well, I, yeah, but I, I need to hear them so that I can absolve you. And I said, listen, the one that is, absolves me of my sins has nail scars in his hands. Show me your hands. <laughs> he, he didn't like me. He decided to, he decided he ought to maybe leave the room. But the thing is, is that it, that is the way it is. Nobody else needs to hear. You and God, that's who needs to hear. And the, and 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 in Matthew six six backs that up. Whenever he, whenever Jesus taught, when we teaching us how to pray, he said, "When you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private." Then your father who sees everything will reward you openly. So, so we have that, that privacy of a, of a response with God. Yes, it's okay to, matter of fact, James brings it out. It's, it, it's, right, it's right for us to, to talk to uh, Christians that we can trust. But, but please, when it comes down to, to confessing sin, that's between you and God. And, and, and our faults, our faults, yeah, we can, we can discuss the, the problems that we have in our, in our Christian lives with each other, but your only one can really deal with your sin. So to maintain your joy, that's how we make sure that it, we can keep ourselves clean. To make, maintain our joy means realizing that, the, that your true position is in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17, you remember I said, he says anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person, a new creation. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. That is, that is the, your position in Christ. When you are there, when you live a joyful, spirit-filled life, and it, you know, I, I have a note in my, in my notes there. It says practicing Christianity takes practice. Yeah, you, don't, you don't just get it right the first time. And, uh, and you've got to realize that anything we do uh, often and do for a living or whatever, it takes practice to get it down right. Well, Christianity is no different. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do things wrong. But it, God knows that. And so you practice your, your Christian life. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, living that life. In other words, we practice our, our, our living in that manner. So it means that when we are being, that being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a continual repetitive filling. When you look at the word that say, where it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the next verse, Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing praises, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. You know, that act of immersion that you had in the Spirit, is, it's the Holy Spirit's ministry 
and it can't be achieved by any by the same some act that you do on your part so it is a continual repetitive feeling and the truth is is once you're saved as a christian you have all the holy spirit that you need you don't have to be refilled uh, with the holy spirit what he needs is he needs more of you he needs you to be more open to him and let him fill your life more. We have a tendency as Christians to, to kind of wall him off and take him out of certain rooms of our lives. And what he wants us to do is tear down the walls in our heart and let him have all of us, every bit of us. Once you're saved, all of the Christians, the, you have it all. All you have to do is make sure that you, he has more of you. So if you want to know that you're living in the Spirit, it's a simple matter. You follow God's plan, and that is watch your fruit. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a judge. I'm just a fruit inspector. Well, God didn't intend for those verses to mean you judge other people's lives by their fruit. It means are you judging your life by your fruit? You need to look at yourself first. What is that? What is that? Matthew chapter 7 that talks about the fact that he says, how can I, how can I remove someone's moat out of their eye whenever I've got a log in my eye? You know, you, you, can't, you can't deal with somebody else until you deal with your own self. And so that is the thing. Just remember, you identify, Matthew 6, uh, Matthew 7, 16, you identify them by their fruit. He's talking specifically about, about preachers that have gone astray and are teaching the wrong thing. But just take it on yourself for a minute. You can identify yourself, if you want to put it that way, by, the, by your fruit. That is, by the way you act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes? Or can you pick, you know, pick uh, figs from this? I always have trouble saying that one. I say something like pigs from th thistles or something. I don't know. But anyway, you, know, you, you can't pick a fruit from a thorn bush. You can't do it. So when you're, you know, it, it, you're living in the Spirit, the, fruit's gonna, the fruit of the Spirit is going to be what's evident in your life. But when you're living in the flesh, the fruit of the Spirit dies back. And what we see is, is the fruit of, is the works of the flesh instead which is which is all of the evils of this world okay so if we take the the time to look at our lives by the way if you want to study that out galatians 5 22 and 23 and then and then look and compare that to the list in galatians 5 19 through 21 there is that you can judge your own fruit by what you see in your life if you're seeing something in your life and you look at those two lists and it, it's not on the list of the holy spirit then all you have to do is change what you're doing if you're not saved get saved if you are saved get back with the holy spirit of god get back in his in his will so obey god and 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 you love on god and it will bring you back into a position of being able to practice your Christian life in that manner. John 15, 9 and 10 says, As the Father hath loved me, even so I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Do you know what commandments he's talking about there? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments that Jesus referred to as the, his commandments for us. What do they boil down to? Love. If you live in your life in, in a loving manner toward others, you will gain more strength in the Holy Spirit and you will be able to see joy in your life even more. Let's, let's move on. Living in joy in the Holy Spirit is like this. Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. In other words, in a nutshell, keep your eyes on Jesus and keep them off of your own problems. 
Keep your eyes on Jesus and keep them off of your own lusts, your, the things that draw you away from him. The way to keep from following those is to keep your eyes on him. And as you do, you will automatically learn to practice living in the spirit of God. You will learn that whenever you are off base, you have a way now of, of looking at that set of balances, if you will, in your life. That's not going to judge whether you're going to heaven or hell. It's going to judge whether or not you are able to experience joy or not. That set of balances and that set of balances is to compare the works of the, of the flesh in your life with the, the fruit of the Spirit and see which way you're living and then deal with it. And, and again, I go back to that idea. It's only when we deal with it by going to Jesus and by talking with him and by telling him all of our problems and bringing them over to him, there's where it can be taken care of. How do you communicate with God? No, obviously through prayer, but also you need to be in the word of God. You say, well, it's too hard for me to understand. Well, then read what you can read. Get a Bible that's easy to understand and then start reading what you can read and train your mind to understand those things. I, I hear that I hear that an awful lot that I, well, I just can't. Um, my, mother, my mom used to say, well, can't never do, do nothing, okay? <laughs> You, you got to do something to be able to have, a, have it. So to practice it, you get a, a, an NLT or a, something easy to understand, and you start reading little bits of it, and you start training your mind to absorb what you read, and that stretches your mind into the areas where you are able to, to go. And, and so just live in the Spirit and practice your Christianity, and you will find that you have the ability to get back into God's arena, if you will, and experience joy. Joy is going to come back into your life because God did not want you to live in misery. He wanted you to live in joy. He wanted you to in, enjoy the, the fruit of the Spirit. So love and joy being two of those we see them in this sermon and we say, this is how we can get back to God. So there it is. We have a reason to practice. We're going to sing a song. We're going we're gonna to have Becky come up and, and play. And we're going to sing the song I started referring to a while ago. I was afraid to break into song that I might get the wrong tune. And you guys would wonder if I'd lost my mind. So you guys stand up and sing with me. And let's, and let's sing this song. How many of you remember this old song? All right, some of you do. Good. Well, you sing the louder so that we sound good, okay? Cover me up. Here we go. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone in my distress he kindly will help me he ever loves and cares for his own i must tell jesus i must tell jesus i cannot bear my burdens alone i must tell jesus I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles, He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask Him, He will deliver, make of my troubles, quickly and in. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, 
Jesus alone. I don't know if there's another verse, so we're just going to stop right there. We are tempted. I'll read it and tried. In our lives, everybody's going to go through that. But when we realize that we're not designed to carry these burdens, we're supposed to go to Jesus and let him help us. You start getting to feeling like ever the whole world's kind of getting dark around the edges and curling in on you. You got to remember this song. I must tell Jesus and he'll bring that joy back. He'll cause you to have joy in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and close. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that your word is true and that everything that we have taught everything that we have read, everything we have seen in, our, in the Word of God and been reminded of today through the power of the Holy Spirit that this is the ultimate end in all of this is that I must tell Jesus and I must stay close to you. Help us to live our lives in such a manner. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.